Oh, that's pretty clean, actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. Comes to head, hopefully. Bam! Hello, everybody. Good morning. We are back at Driven today and gonna continue working on the motor of the K24Z7. Doing a bit more disassembly today. I think what we are committed to doing at this point is get the head refreshed as I'm gonna be doing super tech springs to deal with just a little bit more reliability at the high RPMs. And we're also gonna get the head decked because I've been told by Enrique that the heads typically are the first to kind of warp, so we'll just get that trued up, get all cleaned up from the machine shop and then throw it back on the motor. But for today, I think what we're gonna do is remove the head and we will also uh, get rid of the oil pan. And then we'll take a look at how the pistons look just from the top, maybe clean them up a little bit with a little degreaser and see what is inside the oil pan. Hopefully nothing, hopefully nothing eventful. Now all the parts for the swap have essentially been on order now. We took advantage of Black Friday deals with K-Power and got a whole bunch of their swap parts. It's a bit of a do-it-yourself, build the list yourself of parts uh, because we are actually using a lot of their K24Z3 swap components for their Miata uh, and making it work for our needs. Before we start taking stuff apart, I'm just gonna give it one more once over with a blow dryer just to get as much of the uh, bead blasting material off of the motor as possible. To be honest, having done the glass bead blasting, it's a bit of a regret of mine of having done it because one, it actually didn't take off as much as I was expecting. Part of that could have been, you know, us not using the right pressure. Uh, the label did say up to 70 PSI max, that's what we did. And honestly, it didn't really take too much material off and uh, too much of the crud off and it doesn't look that much better. And now we kind of have this like, you know, back of the mind uh, worry that the motor is gonna grenade itself because of having all that fine dust everywhere. So we just try to clean up as much as possible. Uh, realistically, like, yeah, maybe at the end of the next season, the motor's gonna be gone because uh, the uh, oil clearances are now all gunked up with, with powder, but you know, that's just part of the learning and, and luckily these motors are still pretty cheap. So going with the philosophy of, you know, keeping it cheap, keeping it uh, scrap or junkyard friendly of just picking up a motor and then going with it, you know, hopefully that plays out well for us. Moment of truth on the head and see how varnished the interior of this thing is going to be. <laughs> oh, that's pretty clean actually. Yeah, it does look pretty good. Yeah. And here are. Oh. It's tracking. One sec. Okay. So got the head open now. The cams look pretty good. Valves look pretty clean. Well, we can't see the top sides anyway. What do you think? That's good. Nice thing about Hondas, right? 200,000 kilometers and it still looks like fairly new. Yeah, it looks like they did their own changes, like, you know, pretty frequently. Yep. There's the old valve cover, so. So apparently, apparently valve covers are pretty cheap from the from the dealership, so we're just gonna grab a new one What's and the rock the uh, OEM silver on it. And I know I wanted originally to get some like wrinkle black or wrinkle red, but I don't know, the silver looks pretty good and saves a lot of money. Uh, powder coating is gonna be like three hundred dollars to do it, and you could get a new valve cover from the factory uh, for less than that. Before we get too far with removing the head, we're going to put the motor into uh, service mode with timing to top dead center. So Matt's just helping me right now to figure out exactly how to uh, 
get it to that position so we have it in the right spot and uh, yeah we'll get to removing the head now before turning the crank to get the arrow here to the top dead center mark we're going to first remove the spark plugs that are still inside uh, their terminals you got a magnet to pull them out yep nice yeah, because this tool lost its uh, little rubber grip, so <laughs> Oh, that's like a specific socket for? Yeah, it's a spark plug socket. It's three mm. eights, or uh, five eights. I'm not hearing a click. <laughs> Keep unwinding. There you go. Boom. Not bad either. Let's take a look. So what are you looking for when you're... Oh, let me get my hand there. What are you looking for when you're inspecting uh, these? A few things. You want to see if it's burnt at all. Maybe if it's soaked. There's a little bit of blow-by, but that's kind of normal. But, uh, yeah, I'd say this one's pretty clean. Nice. the entire timing chain cover off so we'll take a look again looks really nice on the inside honestly the hardest thing was to take out was actually this VTC sensor there that was like stuck in there pretty hard uh, but the cover itself came off pretty easily with just a tiny bit of prying and pop came off now we will work on this is something ahead and then eventually also dropping the oil pan to take a look in there. So we're making some progress. The part of the head assembly is removed now. So what we got here is the cams, the cam gears that all we just took off in one piece to keep all the assembly together uh, and hardware together so we don't have to mess with that. Just set it to the side. And then over here we have our the top side of the valve springs and basically what we're going to do now is crack the head studs which are here, here, blah blah blah, all around and there is a specific sequence to doing them as Enrique has just told me so that we prevent any uh, uneven uh, pressure on the head to prevent it from warping. So we're just going to go ahead and pop those head studs off now and then we'll be able to see what the top of the pistons are looking like in the, the top of the short block itself. How much that way? Pretty light actually. Yeah, it's all aluminum, right? Yeah, it's pretty light. And then there it is! <laughs> Eey, look how cruddy that is. That oh, is look at that. pretty nasty. Yeah. Okay. Gonna give that a bit of a clean. Feeling any movement? It's normal for it to have some movement, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so we now have the oil pan dropped from the K24Z7 and I'm just gonna go over one of the main problems with the K24s and that is this absolutely enormous oil pump assembly. So with the swap kit from K-Power, we will be putting a K20 Type S oil pump in here. Uh, it's gonna shed a lot of weight. So we get rid of these balancers, uh, which one of the drawbacks from doing that is, is the engine's gonna be a little bit more prone to vibration, but the benefit is you're gonna lose uh, a ton of weight and the oil pickup should be good to allow the engine to rev up to 8,000 while still maintaining the oil pressure that you need. So apparently, if you get rid of this and put in the Type S oil pump, just from that could be the equivalent of about nine horsepower for the motor. That's pretty impressive. So we're just gonna go ahead and start disassembling this. And while we have the motor part, I will say that throughout the course of the day, the plans for this engine have really escalated and we are now actually gonna completely disassemble it. And because the motor's already out and we're refreshing it, we've just decided to build the bottom end. So we're actually gonna be replacing the OEM pistons and rods with aftermarket ones. Probably lower the compression ratio from, remember the K24Z7 is 11 to one, whereas the K24A is 10 and a half to one, I believe. We're probably gonna try and put in pistons in here that will take it down to 10 to one so that we can put up decent numbers with pump gas uh, with uh, out running into issues with, uh, with detonation with that high compression and boost that we're gonna be running with this car. So we've actually been moving pretty quickly here. With Enrique's help, we basically have the entire motor disassembled. So over here, we take a look. Here is the short block. The main cap down there is just draining. And we have all the rest of the assemblies here. So we've got the head, we've got the cams, and we've got all this uh, stud, head stud, hardware, not stud, bolts, I guess. These are all getting replaced with ARP stuff. We've got the crank and We've got the OEM pistons over here. Uh, there's quite a bit of carbon buildup on the piston surfaces. Uh, so, you know, that doesn't really matter for us anymore because we will just get all of this replaced with aftermarket stuff. Uh, and yeah, the crank is actually in really good condition. Like we take a look at all the, the journals and uh, so far, there's not much uh, scoring or marring over there. So just to, to keep things a little bit orderly, what I'm gonna do now is just bag up some of the stuff that we're not gonna need until we start reassembling the motor, some of the exterior hardware and stuff like that. It's in good enough con condition that uh, I don't think we need to mess around with replacing uh, too much of that stuff, but now it's basically the waiting game on the K-Power parts, uh, as well as uh, some of the other parts that I ordered to help refresh the engine. To clue you guys in on a bit of a, a secret uh, around the rest of the drivetrain, I kind of alluded to in the previous videos that we're gonna be doing an automatic transmission. And just to put it out there, because it's been ordered and things are starting to firm up, we're gonna be working with Seems Legit Garage in doing a S55 DCT. These are the DCTs that you would find in like the F80 series or like the F82 MC. Uh, DCT longer gear ratio because we're probably just gonna throw in like a 3.7 in the final drive and into the stock differential of the FRS but yeah for now I'm just gonna have to go back to the scrappers and see if I can locate a transmission a G I think it was like a GS 37 or something like that is the code name um, and yeah hopefully we can find one that's in decent condition and we'll put the seems legit garage parts onto it. Uh, notably, it's gonna be running the HTGIO can 
uh, adapter, jumper, board setup, I, I don't know what you really call it. Um, and the nice thing about it compared to the HCG GCU is that we actually don't have to rewire the mechatronics. SLG makes a, uh, or HTG rather perhaps, makes a harness uh, adapter that you can just plug directly from the transmissions factory control unit, call it, and connect that through CAN to the Haltech unit that we'll be using to run it. So we don't have to do the messy rewiring work of the mechatronics unit itself. Yo, does this bring back memories? <laughs> How many of these have you opened up before? Only at school. Really? Yeah. We, Not a job? No, we, usually we, because um, we do pistons, we yeah. don't have to take off the, uh, the cradle or the crank. That's true. They just pop right off. Yeah, we just literally unbolt the rods and then the piston comes out. Yeah. Drop We're getting condition out. of these pistons though. Like the, the heads have a ton of carbon caked on. But everything else, like the journals on the, the crankshaft is pretty decent, I think. Okay, so I think we'll probably wrap up the video here and I'm just gonna tidy up now, make sure I'm not uh, making too much mess here at Driven and just start packing away some of the items while we prep the bare block uh, and some of the other parts uh, for the machine shop to clean up the deck and just to get it uh, refinished and ready to go for the rebuild. Catch you on the next one.